Now to aid editing these breakpoints that we have in our session clips, Ableton Live 9 introduces a very quick way of editing these breakpoints. If I clear this envelope here, and if I hover over the panning automation line, I'm not pressing down, but you'll see as I hover over the zero line there, it creates a very small blue dot. And if I do click once, there is our breakpoint. So you can create a breakpoint just with one click. And there we go. Very, very quick, very intuitive. And you can select the whole line there and shift the entire selection. Or you can just hover over in the middle there, click and create our breakpoint. And this brings us nicely onto another new feature which I'd like to show you, the MIDI transform features. Now, you might be familiar with MIDI transform functions in other doors, and this has now been introduced into Ableton Live 9. Um, here I have a random melody which I just quickly penciled in for this example. And if you go over to the notes display here, you'll see some new functions. Now these are quite self-explanatory, but I will quickly go through each one. If I select some MIDI here, if I expand that so we can see that clearly, if I select the first bar of MIDI, you'll see here we have some notes. This is a simple transpose up or down bar. They're very simple to transpose your notes up or down. Now the next button's under here, divide by two times by two. Now this, if I zoom in on our MIDI here, the divide by two will simply halve the amount of time it takes for these MIDI notes to take their course. So if I divide, there you go, they become much smaller but they retain all of the MIDI notes. It's just that they will complete their cycle twice as fast. So just double it to get back to where we were. And you can, of course, increase the amount of time it will take for these notes to complete their course. Uh, these next two buttons, very useful for exploring with uh, melodies and chords. The reverse order button. This simply reverses the order of the notes, so your first MIDI note becomes your last in the sequence, and vice versa. So swap that back again, and the inverse does exactly the same, except it does it on the vertical rather than the horizontal. So if I press inverse, there we go, your bottommost note becomes your topmost note, and vice versa. Very, very useful for messing around with chord inversions. Now legato. Um, I'm not sure we have any notes where there are any gaps, so let's create some. Let's uh, quickly take out that note, and uh, let's shorten this note. And if we select this area here, legato mode should extend that note and that note right up until the beginning of the next notes. Let's try that. There you go. Extends them right up until the beginning of the next note. It doesn't have to be the same pitch. It's just right up until the next note in your particular melody. Now, this is a very useful button here, duplicate loop. Before, to duplicate a section, you had to select it and then copy and paste and then drag the notes over and extend your loop. Now, all we have to do, you'll see the entire eight bars here. And now, all you have to do is click on duplicate loop and there your eight bars become 16. And one final MIDI editing feature to show you. Now you'll see this grey line here above your MIDI notes, just next to the uh, headphone audition. Now if you select a time segment here, you'll see that it creates a start and end point. If I zoom in on that, now you can stretch those notes. Either way, you can contract them or expand them. Any notes preceding this selected section will remain the same, they are unaffected, but all the notes that come after your selection will move accordingly. So if I shrink the amount of time it takes for these notes to take their course, then all the notes after it shift along, and the same if I expand them. So that's another easy way 
of contracting and expanding your MIDI notes. So there are some very useful and easily accessible MIDI transform functions.